Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the latest reports that some people close to Rishi Sunak are urging him to set a date for the general election the day after the local election results on May the 3rd. Now, what would be the advantages to this and how likely is it? So the first thing I would say is that the Conservatives have made a mistake in delaying the general election. Ever since Sunak took over, there were effectively four windows he could have chosen. Spring last year, after steadying the ship which Liz Truss crashed onto the rocks, uh, last autumn giving himself at least a bit of time to get something implemented, this spring or this coming autumn. In theory, there are other windows, but they would be insane, although you can't rule them out. But my real point here is polling has shown that with each window missed, things got worse for the Tories. Had they called the election for last spring on the same day as the locals, not only would the local election results have been way better for them, but they would have been in a stronger position. In opposition now, they would now be in opposition, but in a stronger position to rebuild than they are otherwise going to be. Last autumn, things got worse in the polls. Things are even worse now. So anyone thinking it's not going to be worse still in autumn needs a brain scan. And indeed, according to this report, the Sunak allies urging him to name the date are worried about the continuing rise of Reform UK. Now, this has been the main source of Tory collapse in the polls over the last year. And if they do suffer a further drop in the polls, it's very likely votes lost to Reform UK. But how likely is Sunak to heed these allies? Well, there would be some wisdom in doing so. But my first, my two reasons for thinking Sunak will ignore them. The first is that these allies are clearly the ones who can read data. And so we're almost certainly telling him to call the election earlier anyway. Like they most recently would have been calling for him to, you know, set the election date for May the 2nd. If he ignored them then, I don't see why he would suddenly listen to them now. Unless, of course, he feared a move to oust him if the local and mayoral results are really, really bad. Second reason is that it would seem insane to not call the election on May the 2nd, only to then announce a date for like summer. The benefit of having the general election on May the 2nd, the same day as the locals, is that voters wouldn't have felt the need to vote against the Tories as a protest vote against the Westminster government. They would have been able to do that with their general election vote and then use their local election vote for local matters. So any local Conservative councillors who are seen by the local community as doing a good job would have a decent chance of retaining their seat. You know, so there's a very good chance here that it would it would save their two current mayors, which they may still retain. But this would make it more likely and it would definitely save a good number of councillors who will now be lost. In addition, activists could have been out campaigning for the general election at the same time. Delaying the election even a little bit reduces the Conservatives' pool of activists. I've seen it in Labour. You know, when you've been hit with a really bad election loss, it, it just takes the wind out of so many activists, who some of whom will not then have the motivation to go out door knocking for the next campaign, particularly if they're going out door knocking for the people who cost them locally. Doesn't make sense to call the general election for summer, having just been battered in the local elections. If you're not going to hold the election on the same day as the local elections, it should be because you want a lot more time to do something that you think is going to compensate for those bad results. Another factor might be Sunak's own limited but personal political experience. Like consider he became an MP in 2015, knowing nothing about politics by his own admission at the time. Two years, he hasn't learned much since, has he? Two years later, people were calling for Theresa May to call a snap election on the same day as the local elections. Boost up your majority, they were saying. She refused. Now, the local elections went really well for the Tories. So everyone was going, oh, you should have called it. And she went, yeah, I should have called it. So then she called an election for the summer. She lost her slender majority. That campaign was a disaster. Sunak may well feel that summer elections, therefore, are bad, based purely on that limited experience. However, there are some good reasons for the Tories to name the date on May the 3rd. The first is that it would take out all of the headlines on the local election results. You know, due to the nature of some of the contests, we're not going to have the full picture of results until like the Sunday, three days after polling day, which means we're going to have a load of news on the telly on the Friday about terrible results for the Tories. 
Then we're going to have a load of front page news in the newspapers on Saturday about the terrible results. Then we're going to have more news on the Sunday about the latest results feeding in. And then in the newspapers, you're going to have more results on the Monday as the full picture is known. Days worth of the news focusing on what is likely to be a disaster for Sunak. But if he calls the general election on the Friday, then the main headlines will be all about that. The date will be known. All of a sudden, the papers will be full of it. The TV news will be full of it. The local election results will still be bad, but Sunak will limit the damage because not as many people will talk about them. George Osborne, the former Tory chancellor, has also argued that setting the date would put the party properly into campaign mode and reinforce the idea that Sunak would definitely be leading them into the general election campaign. As thinking there's got some merit. Until Sunak calls the election, the Tories will be spending time wondering if it's worth changing leader. Certainly that's the discussion we're going to get reported in the news. That being said, the Tory party seems so fractured at the moment, I don't think it's a certainty that it will definitely be the case that the party will unite behind Sunak if he names the date. It would be self-destructive not to, but self-destruction seems to have been their watchword lately. That being said, the article in Bloomberg does seem confident that Sunak doesn't feel he's in danger. And if he doesn't feel threatened, there's no reason to call an election for summer. You know, he missed spring. That means he still wants to get something done before the election. I think the India trade deal is clearly nothing political because apart from the Rwanda plan, he doesn't really have any policies left to implement. And the Rwanda plan is a disaster area for him. So his desire to go long can only either be to boost his personal finances or maybe for the sake of lasting two years as prime minister for the record. But I'm not sure I've seen much sign that he cares about his record, only his bank balance. I don't know. Now, I've been wary of putting too much faith in what the papers are saying about the mood in various parts of the Conservative Party of late, even though I don't think any correspondents are lying. I think if they relay... Um, you know, some some statements or moods, I think they're telling the truth. But you don't get an idea of the strength of feeling. You know, you read, for example, like in this article, allies of Sunak are urging him to name the date. And you go, OK, aye, that's credible. How many allies? And how well regarded are they? Sunak's allies could be anything. It could be his most trusted confidants, or it could be like two backbench MPs who publicly backed Rishi Sunak for the leadership two years ago, but don't actually talk to him very often. Besides, one thing that has been made abundantly clear with Rishi Sunak, he doesn't listen to good advice. It's possible he's so arrogant he doesn't listen to much advice at all. But almost every step he's made has been a bad one, like a, sometimes a calamitously bad one. So any sensible advice he's getting, he must be getting some. I think it's fair to say he's going straight in the bin. So I'm completely prepared to believe that Sunak will delay until autumn. Although I would urge people to behave as if the election could be called any day now, because it could. Make sure everyone you know is registered to vote and has either their voter ID or postal vote arranged. But Sunak is probably right that his MPs don't want to topple him. And he probably doesn't want to, you know, he, he, he probably doesn't want to go too early because what's the benefit to him? it would have been better off going in spring. So I think he does want to go long another shot at the India trade deal. In which case, if nothing else, the data analysis will be very interesting. The Tory polling is worse now than it was last autumn. And it was worse last autumn than it was last spring. Their delays have cost them, provably cost them. And if the polling this autumn is the worst of all and their voter suppression doesn't save them in the general election and the party gets the beating of their 200-year life, then Rishi Sunak can claim another entry in the history books. Dumbest Prime Minister in British history. Much to the release of Liz Truss, I imagine. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.